Afternoon, everyone. Is everyone having a good DEF CON? That didn't sound real convincing. Is everyone having a good DEF CON? Excellent. All right. This is one heck of a room. There's a lot of apologize if I can't make eye contact with everyone, but I'll try. So um, thank you uh, for coming to this talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, air traffic control and security 2.0. How many people came to my talk last year? Yes, I did. So, wow, not that many. Oh, okay. Well, it's out on the web. One hand over there still raised. So let's, let's just get right into it. Um, you know, I've got 20 minutes. Um, and you always have too many slides, so I've tried to pare it down. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about who I am, overview from last year, um, some insecurities today, and a little proposal that I'm proposing out to the crowd. Um, DEF CON sort of has the 20-minute talks be, you know, uh, maybe you don't have the research completed or just some ideas or take it out to the community and see what people think. So that's sort of what I have. I thought this was uh, an interesting uh, little Dilbert here. Um, can everybody read that in the back? I don't want to read a Dilbert. Okay, so who am I? Security guy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. We can keep going. So I wanted to say that first... Um, flying is safe. It's one of the safest ways to travel, if not the safest way to travel. Um, after this talk, airplanes are not going to fall out of the sky. Well, not because of anything I'm going to say. Um, and, so, uh, you, know, you know, this is the standard uh, disclaimer slide that everybody needs to do. That's why we have, uh, you know, also EFF. So, uh, any pilots in the audience? Okay. All right. I don't see anybody with the bullshit flags, but uh, you know, if you <laughs> please feel free. <laughs> All right. So, um, um, you know, why did I do the talk last year and this year? Um, you know, air traffic control is moving, busy moving planes throughout the air. Um, in the past, they haven't really been focused on network security equipment because uh, radar scopes were physical radar site and, uh, you know, physical huge cable back to a uh, one, one unit. Uh, it was a big deal for them when they originally had uh, repeaters and they could actually repeat a scope. Um, so um, also, um, you know, sort of just a teaser of what I'm going to talk about. Um, um, you, know, AT, you know, ATC and FAA has really only been concentrating on you know, these days, script titties and nation states, and I, I think I've uh, come up with another group that uh, they may want to concentrate on more that might be a little more dangerous, so. Okay, a little bit, if a lot of you hadn't been here last year, I'll, I'll give a little bit more on the overview of um, my talk from last year. So, um, we talked about how the ATC was running, um, you know, disk operating system. No, no, no. The uh, denial of service attack on an ATC flight plan. So I proposed last year the idea that let's not take a look at, um, you know, anything with, you know, boarding on planes or anything like, like that. Let's take a look at um, if we can find a way to do a denial of service attack to stop airplanes from being able to take off. So with commercial flights these days on instrument flight plans, they actually need to submit their flight plan into air traffic control. Air traffic control will give them the routing information back and then the planes are allowed to take off. So um, the idea was if you could find a way to stuff a lot of fake or bogus flight plans into that central machine, um, and overwhelm it, potentially, um, you know, normal flight plans of airlines would not be able to, uh, you know, wouldn't happen. So I thought it was interesting that I got to talk to some uh, people from the FAA, very positive, uh, last year, and they admitted, oh, yeah, um, and we did this to ourselves. <laughs> that uh, last year, you know, not last year, you know, that um, air traffic control, they were teaching their new controllers how to actually make and create flight plans on their own production network. And in teaching the students on their own production network, the students were hitting the submit button and actually inputting bogus plans into the flight system. So, oh well, I, I guess it was a little justification that uh, potentially that, uh, you know, whole, now they have done some things to uh, uh, mitigate that. Um, to look at the you know, number of flight plans per minute that get inputted in the system, and they have some circuit breakers that they've put in um, for that, um, a lot of uh, just to make sure their own controllers <laughs> don't, don't do it again. Um, last year, I also talked about uh, NextGen, um, this NextGen that's going to uh, cure cancer and uh, you know, uh, 
it's unbelievable. The uh, next gen is the overcompensing word that the FAA has been using to solve every problem that they have. Um, the idea of uh, um, the idea that um, to be able to reduce delays in all the airports around the country, um, to be able to have airplanes be able to um, vector themselves and get to locations quicker. Um, and one of those pieces is this, uh, is this piece of technology called ADSB, which I mentioned uh, last year. ADSB is a way that each airline, airliner themselves would actually broadcast their latitude, longitude, altitude, and who they are identification uh, in a clear text packet, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, and the idea with ADSB is um, that radar sites are expensive. Um, if we can have all the airplanes broadcasting their specific location, then um, that would save on radar sites and then also allow the FAA to pack more planes in the air um, and be able to have less separation. Um, you know, they have all these in-tail separations. I'm not a controller, so um, uh, you know, some, of those, some of those buzzwords. So we'll, we'll kind of touch on ADSB again um, in, in in this talk. So what's also interesting that, that's happened from uh, last year, it really seems that for whatever reason from last year to this year, the FAA seems like they have some funding. They have some, some of the biggest contracts. Uh, I don't know if anybody, any, anybody has uh, gotten any FAA contracts. Uh, maybe nobody wants to raise a hand. But, um, <laughs> but uh, some very large um, you know, million and billion dollar contracts have the FAA has gone out to this, this second bullet about um, trying to generate and create next gen technologies of um, you know the, these ideas of you know an air traffic control tower that could be virtual um, and have one control tower in one central location and that one control tower would be able to be turned on and you know work in San Francisco or, or, or any control tower um, it, it's kind of interesting so also it, it's been a little disappointing some of my um, you know, people that I've met through the FAA, there sort of seems to be a little bit of brain drain. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just normal ebb of flow of things, but I just found that, um, you know, a little interesting of, um, you know, some people getting frustrated of, uh, of the, you know, FAA administration. Okay, so I guess I jumped a little ahead with, uh, with this slide. So the next gen ATC is the idea of you know, converting from proprietary hard hardware to commercial off-the-shelf hardware. Um, right now, um, some of the scopes and uh, things that the controllers are using to um, navigate planes throughout the air are, are pretty old and some old technology. Um, and, you know, just like anything, this first bullet, you know, I could even cover and say ATC, you know, the, the, the power companies and SCADA and, and a lot of people have seen, once when you switch from proprietary hardware, to commercial off the shelf, you introduce a whole lot of things. Um, the FAA also um, was, they had all these dedicated links around the country and now they're doing more VPN and, and trying to use more internet. Classic things you hear, you know, in, you know, in the enterprise and large corporations of, the, you know, all the same problems you all might, might think of. Um, what was interesting that the next gen, the idea that they were, they felt that radar sites were very expensive to maintain, so that whole IDSB, but then you have um, things like, well, you know, as, as far as NORAD now responsible for tracking all airplanes inside the country as well as outside, um, NORAD still has responsibilities for uh, wanting those radar sites for, for reasons. So, um, you know, their initial thing that there would be a major cost savings getting rid, of, getting rid of radar sites seems that it's not that true anymore, that they're still needing to keep them around. And then this idea of um, you know switching from a radar uh, sweep to generally knowing where our airplane is from every airplane out there um, mandatory having a um, transponder that'll report latitude, longitude, altitude in, in clear text, and that's this idea of ADSB. Uh, just recently, the FAA um, mandated that that will be a requirement for most airlines in the um, in very bu in busy airspace by 2020. Now you say 2020, it seems like a long way out, but if you've known um, you know any sort of anything, uh, 2020 will be here pretty darn quick. Um, I'm always amazed at physical construction projects when they're building a road or whatever. Those are 25-year to 30-year projects when you when you see them 
uh, digging the side of the road. Um, and um, so it, it'll be interesting. So something I'm proposing out to the thing that I was sort of thinking about all this, and I don't know, maybe I'm, you know, full of whatever, but so wouldn't it be interesting if we could get a live feed of every plane in the air? Um, you know, we've all been out to those websites that uh, um, you can track live flights. You know, we've probably all tracked our spouse's flight as it goes across the country. Realize that's not all. That's a subset of the planes um, that are out there. Um, you know, and you know the idea, do you climb fences or hack the FAA to get that? Um, and then I thought, you know, um, maybe there's another way. So. And I, I like this quote, and I know everybody says that anytime you see a quote, it could be taken out of context. Um, but, you know, the FAA notes that there is no right to privacy when operating the NES, National Airspace System. So, no right to privacy. Um, and specifically what I was thinking about was there are, uh, how many people came here to DEF CON on an executive jet? Anybody? Executive jets? No? You can, it's okay to raise your hand. Oh, I got one. Good for you. Good for you to be brave. A two, maybe. Good for you. I want to be your friend. <laughs> so um, those executive jet guys, I don't know how many people know this, that um, when you own an executive jet in certain planes, you can request to the FAA, you know what, I would like my tail number not to be rebroadcast out to the internet or third-party providers. Uh, there's two different layers that they can do that. They can ever actually have it um, not be rebroadcast um, internally, or even that the FAA sees it and it's not uh, rebroadcast re broadcast out to um, third parties. Um, you know, maybe uh, y you know, uh, example, large company. If if you could uh, be able to see that two different la two large companies, their executive jets, um, you know, went to the same location, potentially you could say, well, maybe those two com companies are about to merge or, um, you know, the, these large companies, they feel that it's a security risk that uh, you know that they're, um, you know, right after the uh, stock market crash, everybody goes to Aspen. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of was also focusing on that, you know, that there's, there's these sort of stealth planes, and not, uh, not stealth, but planes that are still flying in the national airspace system that we, that they still are allowed to use the services of the public but we're not allowed to track to see where they go. But notice the quote. Okay. So why don't we take it a step farther? Why don't we create our own FAA real-time flight tracking database? Why try to even get into the crown jewels of the FAA? You know what? Leave them over there. Why don't we make it ourselves? And you're saying, what? Well, think about it. Um, right now, um, deployed in Florida and Alaska, ADSB is already deployed, and also through the, the Gulf of Mexico, um, with some antennas that would be listening to two different um, transponder frequencies. You would be able to um, passively listen, um, not against the law right now. It is for cellular signals, but not against the law right now. Listen to that. You'd be able to get the latitude, longitude, and ID of the plane. Um, and then put in a database. Um, you know, think about it, uh, you know, just even in the city of Aspen, seeing the executive jets land and, and seeing that. Um, you would be able to, you know, take a third-party feed and see all the, you know, all the planes that are actually out there and then, you know, take that and take it away to see, you know, what planes do you guys, you know, what planes does your own database see that, you know, aren't out there? Um, there was a real good um, Freedom for Information Act where they, uh, that I think they actually went, it might have been NASA, that they actually got, for whatever reason NASA had the data, that they got the list of aircraft tail numbers that were on that blocked list. You know, good on then. I think even EFF might have helped them with that. Um, but that was just a static list. Um, so, what, you know, the whole so what, you know, I, I always, whenever I do something, the whole so what. So, you know, what, what do you think the marketing people would do with this stuff? Foursquare and be able to know where we are and, you know, real-time 
tracking of everything, of uh, you know, the idea that um, you could see all the planes, you know, the executive jet traffic and you know, product placement from, from all that stuff. You know, we talk about, you know, uh, we talk about cell phones that you know, there's, there's a level of thing. Um, you know, back here when the FASA, you know, there's no right to privacy. When they said that, I was wondering why was somebody even asking the FAA for a right to privacy? Um, and uh, you know, I thought it was a really interesting idea um, about that. So, you know, this also is one of the fields, the FAA, you know, that the air traffic control and FAA, there's, this is just, uh, you know, an un, untapped market out there for looking at things that uh, are out there. Um, you know, a friend of mine has, you know, presented at an FAA conference and he was trying to challenge the FAA to reach out to all of you. There's a lot of smart people in this room, more, you know, more than I am. Maybe, maybe this is, you know, not that great of an idea. Maybe it's, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, so I kind of look at, uh, you know, marketing as, um, you know, potentially good or evil. I, I'm not into that whole, um, you know, walking by a build or billboard and they know it's me and I get a product placement ad for, for me. Um, let's hope it's not Vi Viagra, but... <laughs> so, um, so that, that kind of idea of the, this central database that with, you know, 20 or less antennas and key markets that's just listening, receiving only, not transmitting, um, and actually trying to make, make the database yourself. Um, you know, it, it's a, in my view, it's an interesting idea from the, from the fact of, um, you know, the FAA that it, in some ways that's their crown jewels if you were to be able to reproduce it, not hack them, let them do whatever they want, reproduce it with the fact that uh, ADSB is going to be transmitting all that stuff. So, kind of, kind of neat idea. Um, so, and then also, you know, if anybody wants to help, uh, you know, please feel free to, you know, come talk to me. Um, and maybe you got another idea um, that you want. Um, so, you know, we talked about that. You know, obviously it was a, a, a little quick for the talk. I'll take just a, one or two quick questions, and I know that they're going to cut me right off at, at uh, 20 minutes because uh, there's another speaker here. Yes, sir, I'll try to repeat your question. Go ahead. Oh, do I have any technical references for the format? Yes, it's, they're all out there on the internet, the internets, um, the ADSB protocols and everything. And right now, uh, UPS airline, U, yeah, uh, UPS? Yeah, UPS is actually, they, they've equipped all their aircraft with ADSB. Uh, the Capstone Project in Alaska, they have their planes. Um, now, from a safety point of view, yes, uh, they've, in Alaska, they had a lot of um, safety positive with ADSB from um, being able to now see small planes in there where radar coverage was not not to that extent. So, uh, any, yes? Right, so the, so the, yeah, so the gentleman said, well, um, what about uh, the idea that one could do a denial of service on the system? Um, you know, in, in a report that the FAA published that I, that I have in my, in my notes, the FAA felt that, now, <laughs> get this, you want to take this good or bad, the FAA felt that there's no change in the risk to denial of service from now to with ADSB. No change in the risk. They didn't say what the risk was. There's no change to the risk. So um, now I also want to make one comment about that. Um, you know, there is some talk about oh well, you know, jammers and be able to uh, transmit signals. Um, you know, e you know, something I found out in, in between last year and this year. The FAA has this uh, term called phantom controllers. Uh, the people, you know, in parts of the United States. They set up a big, uh, you know, radio and actually try to talk to the, talk to the pilots, um, and maybe try to tell them to turn left to right. Um, what's interesting about that? They usually have once a month the incident, and uh, they usually find the guys pretty quick. Um, the when one keys a radio or keys a, you know, there actually is in the analog level a unique signature that a radio has right when the capacitors and diodes and everything come up that it's not just a quick, quick sharp and you're transmitting. Um, there's been, you know, maybe somebody's even presented about that at DEF CON that one can uh, finger, fingerprint a radio from the analog level and be able to um, 
know that. Um, um, you know, the, I know that uh, even in Iraq and Afghanistan, they have um, capabilities to be able to, you know, pinpoint that stuff. So, a any other questions? We're almost out of time. Yes, right here in the front now. Uh, what prevents somebody from actually just spoofing the information the Right. So the question: What's the? What's the? What's? How do you? How would you stop somebody from spoofing the ADB, ADSB that they're sending? That's a good question too. And the FAA, um, you know, a lot of these questions they tried to address. I, I felt they addressed pretty poorly um, in the in the document. That's uh, um, uh, it's it's one of these references on here. I think it's the first one there. Right. It, it, oh, actually, it might be the last one. I'd be happy to. T it, it's one of these four documents that that is uh, um, that they try to answer those questions. Um, they once again said that there's no change from current to, from current to future. So they didn't. It's not like they answered the question. And, and this gentleman, and and then we're oh we're done. Okay. So thank you very much. And if you'd like to talk to me, I'll be right across the hall. I'll be happy to chat with anyone. Thank you very much for your time. Please enjoy uh, your DEF CON.